Tyrod Taylor was taken out of Virginia Tech with the 180th overall pick in the 2011 draft by the Baltimore Ravens. As a sixth rounder, it's not a huge surprise that Taylor was not the first, second, or third quarterback off the board, but instead the 11th quarterback to be selected that year. With the 180th selection, the 2011 NFL Draft, the Baltimore Ravens have selected Tyrod Taylor. Once you get past the marquee quarterbacks taken in the 2011 draft like Cam Newton, the crop of quarterbacks selected before Tyler gets sketchy fast. This is a draft class that included guys like Ryan Mallett, Ricky Stanzi, and Nathan Enderley. When Ryan Mallett is the most recognizable name, you know you're in trouble. Now, we can debate whether or not Tyrod Taylor should have been taken that late in the draft, as the slant on dual threat quarterbacks has drastically changed since 2011, with more and more athletic quarterbacks getting a real shot in the NFL nowadays. But the fact of the matter is he was a sixth rounder. And for a sixth rounder, he has actually accomplished a good bit in his NFL career, no matter what the angry Bills fans on Twitter used to say. I mean, in 47 career starts, which, let's call a spade a spade, came from three subpar teams, Taylor's record is 24-21-1, not to mention the fact that he's thrown 54 touchdowns to just 20 interceptions. Taylor's career interception percentage is around 1.5%. The list of other active quarterbacks with percentages below 2.0 includes Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, and Tom Brady. Not exactly bad company to keep there, huh? Just having those kind of accomplishments alone are more than most sixth rounders or NFL journeymen can say. But Taylor's resume is surprisingly deep for a guy that is so understated. But Taylor has been selected to a Pro Bowl and was also a member of a Super Bowl winning team, the 2012 Baltimore Ravens. Admittedly, he was a backup and hardly saw the field that year, but there's no taking that ring away from him. But for some reason, everywhere the man formerly known as T-Mobile goes, it seems like career tragedy follows him. By far, the craziest instance of this was his most recent usurpation in Los Angeles, where as a member of the Chargers, he was scratched before start because a team doctor inadvertently punctured Taylor's lung. Yeah, you heard that right. Punctured Taylor's lung. Let's take a deeper dive into the insanity behind Taylor's punctured lung and how freakishly similar the situation has become compared to one of Tyrod's previous career stops. The Chargers' Tyrod Taylor saga actually started in week one of the 2020 NFL season. Despite Los Angeles having used its 2020 first round draft pick on Justin Herbert, a highly touted quarterbacking prospect out of Oregon, Taylor had earned the starting job. And while the team still had its sights set on Herbert long term, they were eager to see what Taylor could do. Even some of the Loudmouth media pundits like Rex Ryan had some lofty expectations for Taylor. Just check out what Ryan, who coached Tyrod up in Buffalo a few years back, had to say about the journeyman quarterback before the season. People are going to be stunned at how well Tyrod plays. I think he's a starting NFL quarterback, period. And they're going to win. They're just going to do it differently than Chargers fans are used to. I mean, Tyrod himself, as a wildly understated human being who seems hellbent on being as professional as possible at every turn, acknowledged that he felt he had been underappreciated at different points during his career, telling the Los Angeles Times the following. I felt that I've been underappreciated in the past, but that has never moved my focus from going out and leading each and every week. Yes, playing with something to prove definitely motivates me, but it's not the only thing. I enjoy going out and leading the guys and doing whatever it takes to help the team. Needless to say, the expectations for Taylor, while measured, were decently high heading into the season. And in week one, he delivered, leading the Chargers to a tightly contested 16-13 victory over the Cincinnati Bengals. Did he set the world on fire with his passing numbers? No. And are the Bengals a premier franchise? Uh, no. But the fact of the matter is, Tyrod took a team that was very much in flux in his very first game starting since 2018 and led them to victory. Because that is who Tyrod Taylor is, and who he's always been. It just so happens that horrible, horrible luck seems to follow him. Because during that week one victory, Tyler suffered a cracked rib, which may have been a contributing factor to his underwhelming stat line. Of course, because it is Tyrod Taylor we're talking about, that didn't stop him from finishing out the game against Cincinnati. Nor did it stop him from trying to suit up the following week against the defending Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs. But all of a sudden, just before the game, reports came firing out left, right, and center that Taylor was going to be a last second scratch forcing the unheralded rookie, Justin Herbert, into the starting role. And Herbert actually played pretty well. 
and nearly led the Chargers to a victory in what ended up being an exciting duel between he and arguably the league's best quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. But after the game, all the attention was on Taylor, because the details that came out surrounding his mysterious last second scratching were just that unbelievable. As it turns out, a team doctor accidentally punctured his lungs while trying to administer a pain-killing injection. And as a result, the Chargers ended up slotting Herbert into the starting role. And wouldn't you know it, all he's done is continue to play well, making it practically impossible for the Chargers coaching staff to even think about going back to Taylor once he was fit to play. That is something that could only happen to Tyrod Taylor. It's actually pretty insane. When you go back through the years of his career, at pretty much every stop along the way, he's been saddled by some wild uncontrollable circumstance. When he started off in Baltimore, he was very much an afterthought as a sixth round pick, and he was added to a quarterback room that had an established starter in Joe Flacco, especially once Flacco led the Ravens to that Super Bowl victory. There was no chance for Tyrod to start there. Then, once he found his way up to Buffalo, he had the good fortune of earning the starting job in camp, and he led the Bills to some modest but recently unprecedented success, winning 22 of his 43 starts over his three years there, on a team that was not exactly loaded with talent. Once Ryan left town, the new Sean McDermott-led regime was eager to get their own guy in. And in doing so, they put Taylor in one of the most unwinnable situations imaginable. Because even as they continued to win games behind his risk-adverse leadership, the coaching staff failed to publicly support him. And then, it got worse. They ended up benching Taylor for Nathan Peterman, the former fifth-round pick who famously threw five interceptions in the first half before the coaching staff realized their mistake and subbed Taylor back in after halftime. The Bills then proceeded to draft quarterback Josh Allen out of Wyoming in the first round the following year, and shipped Taylor out to Cleveland for a third round pick. Great, Tyrod was now out of that brutal situation in Buffalo. No more Nathan Peterman, no more Sean McDermott. Finally, he gets to play for a coaching staff that believes in him enough to trade for him? That all sounds great! Until you factor in the fact that Cleveland had drafted Baker Mayfield with the number one overall pick in the same draft that Buffalo took Allen in. Meaning that, once again, Tyrod Taylor was going to find himself as a placeholder for a terrible, terrible team. A terrible team that, for lack of a better way to say it, was terrible for a reason. Because of an overwhelming incompetence that dripped from the top down. There is a kind of incompetence that lets you name one guy, Tyrod Taylor, the starting quarterback for the season, only to bring their rookie in after Taylor suffered an injury and never give him a shot at playing again. Now, with all due respect, Baker was playing out of his mind, and he'd go on to break Peyton Manning's record for touchdowns by a rookie quarterback. But still, it has to be long said that a player should never lose his job due to injury. And that's exactly what happened to Taylor in Cleveland. Luckily for Taylor, it was the last year on his deal. So after being strung along by the Browns for a year, he set sail for the West Coast, signing a two-year, $11 million deal with the Los Angeles Chargers to reunite with his former offensive coordinator, Anthony Lynn, who had recently taken over as the head coach in LA. At that point, Los Angeles still had their longtime starter in Phillip Rivers, but everyone knew his days were numbered. Even if ownership wanted to bring in a rookie like Herbert, at least once Rivers was gone, Tyrod was going to get a real shot at starting. Until the most Tyrod Taylor thing imaginable happened. I mean, come on, who gets their lung punctured by the team doctor? And just like that, Taylor had lost his job due to injury again. All of this misfortune hasn't turned Taylor sour though. Justin Herbert raved about how fortunate he has been to have Taylor as a teammate and a resource. Here's how Herbert explained it. He's been an incredible teammate. He's been awesome in the locker room, and he's one of those guys I look up to so much. He's always there on the sideline, helping out, giving advice, and even when we're watching film together. He's a great guy to have in your locker room, and he's one of the best guys I've ever met. Once again, Tyrod Taylor is being a class act in the face of adversity. It's just too bad he is one of the single most unlucky guys to ever play in the NFL. It's just not fair, damn it! <laughs> but what do you think? Do you think Tyrod Taylor should get another chance to start in the NFL? Join us in the comments section below. If you like this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. 
But as always, thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.